spirituality, tradition, business, and so much more. Hi, I'm Regina Gershman. And I'm Dr. Sam Dubé. Together, we're going to take you on an extraordinary journey with engaging people from around the world, starting from right here in Ottawa, the capital of Canada. Dr. Sam Dubé here once again, and my guest right now is André Prince de Grasse of Montreal, who is the author of Infinite Shades of Happiness. The subtitle is Love and Online Dating, Revised Edition. So, André, or André, it is wonderful to have you with us today. Thanks for Thank being here. Thank you very much. Can you summarize your book for us? I always say the book itself come as a surprise to me because it's reflecting my experiences being at the online dating sites, which is completely new experience for a lot of people, not youngest generation, but most of people who are translate from the previous way of meeting to the internet way of meeting, find out that sometimes is a cruel, cruel way of getting relationship. And when you get in online dating itself, you know, you have to adapt yourself. It's like life experience that you're not prepared in the school, you're not prepared by your raising, it's coming completely out of whack, but you have to survive. It's a survival game. I don't want to use this game because it's not a game, it's searching for somebody in a relationship, but it's a, sometimes for many people seen as a game of getting somebody hook up. So you have to discover who is who, and takes time. So Andre, you, you talked a little bit about having had personal experiences with, with dating and online dating. What motivated you to write this book in general? Well, how I can say this, you know, in simple way, I think comes from pure frustration. And that was driving mod because what you experience at first sight comes not what you expect at the beginning when you start to going on online dating. So when you see the discrepancy between what you live through and what you expect, you I decide to share with others. So I try to do this in somehow humoristic way of uh, you know, relating what my experiences are. But because we are living on the same time with the changing of, you know, perceptions and respect and between the genders, what we have, what I have to do, I have to adapt myself writing this book through the multiple point of view coming from the readers. And especially when it's being written by the guy, which not many guy in the history wrote the book about it. Mostly are very often are written by women. I knew that I have to get fair opinion from both sides of gender. So once I finish my book and I start to look for publishing, I get advice from the publisher to get woman's point of view of what I am claiming. So being myself raised and lived in many continents around the world, knowing different culture, I decided to go on internet and collect impression about dating from 50 women across six continents. Wow. It takes me about four years, four years to do and the key aspect were whatever I wrote as a chapter, and I ask women to comment on this chapter, I ask every single woman who was writing with me to be strictly between 500 to 700 words of max. Because I didn't want to, I wanted that she goes on the same angle than me, but with her own point of view. And that what creates, you know, unique 
approach on my book when my chapter as a man present situation that I lived through but on the same time for each chapter I have 10 different point of view of women very short ones coming from different culture different continent different point of view which provides you know the 360 uh, degree look at online dating coming from different perspective and because I was also I study Einstein theory which says about relativity yes. I, I can relate today based on my book that relativity concept apply very well, very well to relationships because the purpose of the relativity concept is from Einstein point of view that any subject you re look at from different point of view has different different shades of appreciation but remains the same subject so that's give you the you know relative point of view of topic topics that i'm covering very interesting very interesting uh, applying einstein's theory of relativity to relationships an example of, for instance, an experience that you had and you related in your book, and then the, the differing perspectives of the women that you had either interviewed or respond to your experience. Can you give us an example? A humorous one, if you have one. Oh, you know, I, listen, uh, I can go and without being whatsoever prejudiced or irrespectful to human beings very often women or men are driven also by the similarity which one of the aspect of similarity it's a height you know very often when you have tall guy is very often looking for tall woman there is shorter guy looking for shorter woman. It will not, short guy will not go with tall woman, but tall woman will not go with short guys. So that's what I found out. So basically speaking, when I present one of the case, when I was not reading through profile, but I was just basically looking at the pictures and responding to the person, and then after establish already communication everything for a few days you find out there is one over one feet difference between us so then you have to get out of if you don't feel comfortable from this perspective because that's how you sense and this is not you know uh, you can have many magnificent people of different size size should not matter to you know to the differences but very often your subconscious drives sometimes to you to make a choices and i when i find out on my side i find out suddenly that many women relates very well to this to me in responding and that was like you know striking aspect of this and i i don't want to go and you know i am trying to be respectful to everybody what on this aspect Right, of course, of course. Um, so, in, in fact, then, you found some commonality, both cross-culturally, cross-ethnically, cross-racially. Uh, 
across the world um, with the opinions of uh, the, the, the women. Is that what you're saying? Yes, but no, you cannot generalize. Okay. That's sure, you cannot generalize, but you can find out proportion of the you know population of women that they're going to share your point of view with selection of who is going to be her mate. Right. So right. The issue is that very often this kind to be per maybe perceived as a macho style when I went through the process and find out that this is universal style, uh, you know, approach regardless of gender, which was surprising to me and that was amazing also. The other aspect which is not, you know, not uh, negligent is that online dating for generations that are over 40, mm -hmm. it's a new beast. People are not feeling comfortable with. So whoever is over 40, they always think about the old fashioned way of meeting. So when they get to the online dating, they are just driven by very simple way. Pictures, descriptions, and stops there. And then they have to go on probing. And most generational after millennium, uh, you know, person, it's very quickly bored by the texting. They don't want to, they want to talk to as soon as possible. When I wrote this book and I tried to get woman opinion, I asked many women over 40 to make give their perspective of the, the book. And they read it and they don't want to do it. And I have one after another refusal. And that was cross. After 40, I was, I find out very few, which was truly not much, okay, that were willing to express. However, for millennium generation, that was no issue for women. They love it. So you see the big shift and big, you know, the divide between the older way and the new way but they don't want to express and collaborate with me on writing this book. Right. Which it becomes, it comes like surprise, but that comes, you know, through the process of selecting, of communicating. I communicate at least at 250 women to get 50 women to, to work with me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a lengthy, lengthy process. Well, we also live in the age of Instagram, right, Andre, where, uh, you know, most people have an Instagram account and they're, they're basically publishing their lives online or, or what they want people to perceive as their lives. So I think that, that millennials are a little bit more into uh, promoting and showing and then they're not, as you mentioned to me on the phone, um, they were not embarrassed to, to, to help you uh, with your book at all. So I think that is a trend, that is a tendency.
But um, I'm, I'm looking for an example here. Can you give us an example, either from your life or perhaps from the book, of maybe uh, a situation that uh, illustrates what you're talking about? That illustrates um, that the the opinion of a uh, uh, women spans 360 degrees, and uh, and that you were you were surprised by what you were hearing um, once you once you gathered the information for your book. Or were there trends? Were there in fact trends? Because you did mention the tendency is, for instance, taller women not to want to date shorter men. Right? Yeah, but that, that's that's one of the well, that's one of the kind of the appreciation that you can get based on the hookups for relationship. Right. There's others, okay, that uh, right, comes right. The, to the play. Now, what also comes to the play when I was writing the book is that it's not just gender related, but also. Uh, sexual sexual tendency related so which means that gender you know the younger generations are bisexual so they are looking also from my book to find out kind of the example that they can relate to it it's not just uh, monolistic and you know monog monogamic type of relation right so uh, I'm just trying to cross because you, you, you have to go, uh, examples are being given in my book. I, I don't want to, you know, spell you know, out my book. You I don't want to spell out my book to Give us, to give us something, Andre. Give us a little something. Give us a little taste. Come on. <laughs> I thought. The, 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 the reviews for your book, I have to say to our viewers, are, were, are, were excellent. And people were, were saying, this is a fantastic book, and it's like it was talking to me. It's written in a conversational tone. I identified so strongly with some of the experiences and the opinions and perspectives portrayed in the book. So the reviews were very good. So I'm yeah. trying, to, trying to get you to illustrate some of those. Yes. Okay, fine. So let, let's, let's just give you how this book is being written. And yeah. that's, I, th I think that's the most important thing. I'm giving the life. I have I have a lot, lot of chats that I reserve when I was dating. So I, I have the materials to relate to it. So when I was writing, I was relating to life experiences of how we connect. But on top of the pure you know chatting, which means the pure exchange of the textual messages. I was providing in my book my raw emotion, how I felt about what I received, which provides completely different dimension of communication. And that's what maybe people relate to it, because you can read text by itself, but when you provide behind, which is not unwritten and not published in, in the communication, you, how you feel, how you perceive, what you deduct from it, in this book that provides you life experience like you you have been sitting beside me and living through this experience and that's what is my book about so there's that that really personal touch and that sincerity i think that uh, that comes out uh, in your writing and it's not just mine women did the exactly same thing they wrote, they they follow my script they understood very well what they want to convoy us a message, right. but at the same time was providing their own input of emotions that they draw and they put on paper besides just pure exchanges, which become more than just exchange of the ideas, but right. more so in experience of how you received, what do you think, and your assessment, you know, oh, okay, this guy, okay, maybe he is just fishing, it's not true, and then you can read between lines.
So many of the readers commented that your book helped give them a strategy of how to approach online dating. And so, for instance, moments ago you mentioned how um, people can respond to the photos alone and then initiate conversation, get into a communication, and then realize there are some real differences. Maybe yeah, yeah. perhaps not having paid attention to the profile. So it sounds like one of the lessons is read the profiles. Okay, so what I, what I did in my book, okay, and I just published part one at this moment. I have already written part two, part three, and part four. It's already written and it's not published. But okay, it, wow, that, that's two, great. Two, three, and four, it's about, I have like 500 pages of the, of the documents already written. The issue is I went through the process and I give you just some structure which in the, you know, the outline of my book. First, I state first chapter, why I'm there. Why so, you're there, okay. Uh, why I'm there. So people can relate first why I'm sitting in front of the screen on online dating. Mm. And the goals, and that's the, that's the topic of the chapter. After that, second topic, how I present myself. So the whole idea, how I'm going to write, how I'm going to present, how they're going to perceive, how they you know, everybody is going to understand what I'm trying to communicate, how I ha I should be communicating in the effective manner, not too long, respecting the new way of communication. All this aspect is chapter two. Chapter three, beginning of communication. So you're receiving first one, and then you go through the whole motion of getting live through the process of communicating but being only at the stage of email uh, of chatting nothing else and looking at the pictures mm -hmm. chapter four on my book it's very important is that i'm representing and making conscious that when you go on online dating you have to know yourself if you don't know yourself and you don't understand what's driven you to be what you are, basically you can be or squashed or not able to whatsoever communicate properly. Mm -hmm. At the end, you can also be deceived and live through, you know, big pain because you can live very, very much unfortunate experiences experiences okay. so i'm giving the guidelines based on my experience what to expect and what not to expect when you go to the process and to find out the first cue of communication before even you try get to the physical contact points uh, that's repeated is uh, knowing your own expectations, being very clear about your own expectations expectations, and what you're looking for and who you're looking for, right? Yeah. And, and, also, and also what to expect and how to interpret. So for example, before you even get to the first dating, first occasion to talk, read between lines. And you can look for the cues, and if those cues which I give you are correct, then go. If you have to have red flags, be careful, 
But Andre, how do you develop the skill of reading in between the lines? I give the whole methodology uh -huh. and I provide this. So if you find out some guys, they find out on my book, they wrote and they say that it's a game changer because they understood. But you have to read to understand right. what I'm stating and then you can relate to your own experience. There's some woman that wrote me, Andre, what you show me in chapter four, I need five years to discover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which means I'm sharing intimately yes. things that they should look and if they are no, they cut a lot of time of learning and experiencing. Can you give our viewers one example of, of that? to save them time and energy. I think it would entice them to purchase your book, actually. So give us one example of a lesson learned the hard way and that you talk about in your book. Well, uh, red flag, potential red flag, something that may have taken someone five years to discover. I, I'm talking about the first touch when you touch somebody. First touch, first physical contact, okay. First physical touch and what the consequences are. Okay. I was very, very enlightening. And very I did enlightening. Enlightening and I went with many women to the whole process of validating my chapter four and you can read the comments. But you now we start to understand what I'm talking about. I, I, I synthesize a lot of things that people learn by bits and bytes in their life. And I, I, I synthesize in one capsule of one chapter and everything going from understanding the hints, understanding the body language, understanding the sensual perceptions, Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to, you know, patronize and I'm not trying to, you know, I, I'm just trying to share what they can relate to it. The biggest, the biggest advantage of my book, which I'm getting from my readers, is that they find out it's easy to read. It's not complicated, which means they can relate very quickly. There is no sophistication of wording, putting the terms that, you know, describe uh, Freudian or others behavioral type. I just went street smart approach. Street smart, which most people can relate in their life. And I use the language and ability to communicate. So it's become very simple as long as you put mind to it. Okay.
going to ask you this question. What is the caveman cavewoman test? Well, that's I'm not going to explain because that's you have to read to understand. <laughs> hey, listen, I, I, why, why, why should I give the punch before my book is being read? Somebody reads. And you know why? And you know Fair why? Enough. Because to get to my cave test, you have to go also understand before the steps. Right. If right. you understand those steps, then cave test has sense. Otherwise, it's just you take out of context. Okay. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to take it out of context. No. Right. Just, you, you have to, uh, honestly, I spent a lot of time thinking how to structure my book. Because, you know, in the chapter two, which I have not published yet, then I am going to truly, truly, the description of physical meetings, mm -hmm. interactions, mm -hmm. putting in scene, getting back, not working, why it's not working, going through the whole process, then question yourself, what's your done I'm again doing at this site with all people who doesn't understand what I'm looking for, mm -hmm. and then the whole process of searching become refinement that at some point you have, if not persistence, I think you're going to succeed. And woman's testimony to my writing. Okay, I'm not letting you off the hook yet, Andre. So can you give us an example of a dating experience, either online or otherwise, that you had years ago, before you published the book, that had you known then what you know now would have turned out very differently? Could have turned out very differently. Yeah. You know, you have to you have to just relate to very basic stuff, which means that you're being driven by emotions and being driven by your rational. So when emotion takes over rational, and you go on the dating sites knowing that you have not looked at different cues, then you get to the situation that you're being surprised, and I will. Like, you know, I, I, a lot of women was complaining to me, okay, that, that basically speaking, they were taking, uh, being taken advantage by men. I can, I can testimony in my book, I was taking also advantage as from women. Yeah. So it's, you know, the, the crimes okay. has two, two sides. Yeah. It's not being too accusing, but it's just recognizing what's the differences absolutely are. absolutely and yeah no and I, I actually agree very strongly with that it's a people problem just different different cues that's and that's not gender problem. problem no it's not a gender problem at all and, and people are very often going to the gender to blame instead of looking maybe at the other aspect which is educational raising aspect and others
think about the comment, you know, I've often heard it said that uh, we're not rational beings with emotions, we're emotional beings who rationalize. And, you know, I, I've seen some highly intelligent people use their education, use their innate debating ability and, and, and rationality and cognitive strength to basically justify any situation that they either find themselves in or a behavior, right? So I think there's a lot of truth to that. So where do we reconcile the emotional or sometimes I think you refer to it as like a subconscious drive um, of attraction, our emotional drives with our of wanting to rationalize, to try to be objective, to try to do what we think is right for us. How do we manage those aspects? I think the the, the starts plan starts what you want and what you're looking for. Because that's the biggest problem on dating sites. I would say 75% of the person, man or woman, on dating sites, they want to date, but they don't know why. And the problem is, and you can, you can find out by asking questions. So what you're trying to do when you like somebody, because there's no secret. There is the, always this kind of, when you see the pictures, you're attracted or you're not attracted. This is first clue of, uh, you know, consider, considering, um, considering any kind of relation. If you don't like person, you don't go for it. You know, otherwise you, you have something, you know, strange reasons for it. You have to like the person first and emotionally relate to it to even consider. Now, from the moment that you reach this level of considerations, you have to know also what you want from this person. So, and, and the, you have to be fair to, to this person as far as you fair to yourself. So, you have to go through this aspect of not rationalization, but probing and asking the right questions to find out the, the, what the person, honestly, in front of you, are looking for. If you find out that you share common goal, that you share the common value, that you share the ease of being together, you can relate to it, then you go to, to the next stage. So the issue is that it's you have to maintain your emotions at the bay as long as you go to this process and not being full yourself trying to go in front of the reality and then the reality catch you up and then you pay the price. So right. basically speaking, it's a fine line, but fine line of understanding and understanding at each level how I'm progressing. It's not disregarding, but if you have too many red flags, you just politely terminate. You don't go any further. That's my experience. You, you don't try because you, you, you know that it's not going to work out later on based on your experience. So you don't want to go like to intimate part of the relationship before you reach elementary comfort level that any kind of relation has chance to succeed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as you were saying, you need to know yourself. <clears throat> you need to know why you're in front of that computer screen. And uh, you need to know also, I think, what you have to offer someone. Right? Absolutely. It makes you very different depending on who you're intending to partner up with. You offer different things to different people because of our, the interaction, you know. But uh, I think, like you were saying, when you know yourself, when you know what you're looking for and you have an idea of what to expect, then that puts you in a very good frame in which to engage other people without acting too quickly, too emotionally, without investigating them thoroughly, without finding out everything you need to know about them before going to those next steps. And people often jump into things, right? Because of insecurities, loneliness, uh, um, 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 certain emotional needs, um, you know, and I think that's very, very sound uh, advice. And you taught, you mentioned, and you're not going to reveal any more to us, I know, but these prescriptions for finding red flags, how to read between the lines, how to find out what it is you really want, and how to find out uh, what to expect so that you're not necessarily overly hurt or overtly um, um, get involved too quickly. 
um, um, that sort of thing. Because, like you said, um, about online is very different. And the older people know online is incredibly different than meeting people in person, going out. You know, uh, I can identify that with myself. I don't particularly like texting back and forth and back and forth and back. It's like, no, and I personally think you can't know someone until you meet them. You really can't. You really can't. But, you know, some younger people, um, I've seen this, I've heard this, I've seen this with students of mine. It's like, oh, you know, we stopped talking. It was one text. I'm not quite sure what I said wrong. Okay, but you guys haven't even met in person yet. And these right. rash judgments, these very quick judgments, what do you, what do you have to say to this? Uh, listen, my title, it's not just a title by coming from nowhere. When I said infinite shades of happiness, it's true. Because concept of happiness, it's, you know, related to each person as, as a soul. And you cannot discriminate one against another. So there is millions of shades of happiness. It's up to you to find out which one are fit with your own aim and was your soul. And that's the part that is very difficult. That's the part that you have to understand. That's the part that you should not get too quickly emotionally involved, but not on the same time being the too rational because it's not going to work with women. So you have to find out this, you know, fine line, how on the same time probe and on the same time being accepted on the same time how far you can go before the next step you even consider and like i said and i believe very more and more with time we have we all deserve happiness there is no whatsoever every person deserves happiness the question is how you build your happiness and with whom and this is the whole process that is being explained by me in very not formal way i am giving each each chapter example by example by example so people can relate and be with me and they they can draw their own conclusions mm -hmm. coming to maybe to the same understanding what I'm trying to communicate with not necessarily same how you say happiness that is going to create right. because you can create happiness for one person that's going to be very happy with I can give you an example there is a woman who are wants to find out the soulmate to just go and sit uh, in the park and look at the sunrise okay Okay. And that's the kind of the behavior that is going to fit with some kind of men that they're going to feel comfortable in this pattern. But in other kind of men, they're going to like the same woman, but they're going to ask her to go to the other dimension of happiness. And they're not going to willing to go. So you're... You have, to, you have to discover everyone has, every person has different aspirations and different, uh, how you say, acceptance, what make her or him comfortable. And you have to understand and you have to get to it and very often takes time. Mm -hmm. Before, in the lifetime with marriages, it was taking 30 years. Today, people want to do this in five minutes. doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so basically speaking, if you want to go and discover, and not everyone wants to undress themselves right away in front of everyone, you have to know, you, have, you, you need the tools to achieve your goal. And I'm providing these tools in my book.
Um, to extend this idea, and you're you're talking about equipping yourself for for online dating. You do mention something about the ability to take a risk. So, despite all the preparation, what do you mean by that? Can you contextualize risk taking for us? Well, risk risk taking is that you are based on the communication and flow communication and the emotional that creates with you. You are coming to the position and say, okay, fine, let's go together for coffee. So the aspect is that you shortcut process of discovery because you know that it's not going to lead much further. Mm -hmm. That's your assessment. And then you go to the your first meeting for coffee, just simple coffee. When you sit down in front of the person, whole dimension change because your perception and your reading through the exchanges by voice, by text, and yes. when you see body language, it's completely different. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and that's and that's the part of the risk I saw it when the you you go on the dating and suddenly person for whatever reasons you are communicate communicating, you spend two months to discuss and suddenly says, I'm sorry and leaving. And there is others that's right. Uh, oh yeah, absolutely. In day living, and 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 then I understood after because I communicate after what's what's gone. People co very often comes to realization that we are not fit, and they have this internal, you know, the how you say, instinct that says no, I'm I'm not feeling comfortable to go. It's not going to fit me. And then you have this sudden closing after warm exchanges for two months that you ask, ask yourself why. Right. And you don't have this re response up front. You are finding after. Right. Uh, yeah, that, uh, that could be hard for sure. Um, I did want to ask you a couple more things, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you is there anything else you would like to comment on? Is there anything else you would like to tell our listeners and our, our viewers? Well, I, I think that the most important thing is that if there anybody is curious to find out what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. I would just say go and, and try to understand what I'm sharing with you. And believe me, once you get inside, then you will start to understand that you can shorten by much your period that you're going to spend on online dating. And I think that my book is that's the biggest value that provide to any readers that suddenly you don't have to go and to the whole process of trying to discover for six months, for eight months, I'm, I'm going to shorten this to one evening reading. Think about, compare with your experience, and then you start to maybe understand what I'm talking about. Right, and it starts with knowing oneself, one's expectations, and uh, and doing thorough investigation, and then taking a calculated risk. That's right. Um, we are doing this interview during the COVID nineteen pandemic, so online dating has become more popular. Can you comment as to um, the relevancy of online dating with regards to the pandemic situation and how this has affected um, um, the whole scene, the whole dating scene? I think the people, those who are less, who are more cautious, they're going to take more time to get uh, to the face-to-face -face meeting. Those who are younger, they don't care because, you know, yeah. <laughs> they, they said myself, who cares? Uh, I, I, I don't think I'm going to get this. So, depends on the ge generation uh, dimension. There's different approaches and different point of view, which you have to respect. And I think the most important is that maybe it's more time to spend because you are at coronavirus. Just think about instead of just reacting. Right. Because when you react because you are pressured by work, we are pressured by, you know, life incidents, you don't think about much. But they think itself 
is the process that it's very complex. This is the process that has maybe consequences for your life and for your well-being. So very women, very often they don't want to break their own hearts, which I understand this very well, because that sometimes happened to them and they feel, you know, like uh, betrayed. So I think more you have the tools, more you are aware, more you learn, better you're going to be to succeed. Fair enough. Andre, is there anything else you would like to add to our discussion today? No, I don't think so. I, do, I hope that uh, respond to your concern. I don't have concerns. I want to foster understanding, and I want to know what your insights are. So I think we've achieved that, and uh, the reviews for your book speak for themselves. And your book, again, Infinite Shades of Happiness, Love, and Online Dating. Um, can you mention something about the part one and the, and, and the part two, because it's published under two different uh, companies, is that correct? Yeah, it's uh, published uh, by in Amazon and published by Agora. Uh, the, the differences are not much, you know. The, the, it's much more, you know, how you present. Right. I think the most important thing about my book, my book, it's book written to find out true love on the internet, and that when people start to understand this, it's not, it's not for Tinder, it's not for casual meetings, it's really, if the people are looking for true love, they, they should consider my book. Thank you very much, André, Prince de Grasse, André, Prince de Grace from Montreal. I'm Sam Dubé, it was an honor speaking with you, sir. Stay safe and stay in touch. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. You're very Thank welcome. You. Bye-bye. Oh, oh.